Hello my friends, welcome to my channel and today we'll be uh, discussing a very interesting case and a very interesting topic and that is subcutaneous necrosis of fat in the neonates. So without further ado, let's dive in and get started. So let me start with this case. So this is a 10 years old male infant who is brought to uh, the hospital uh, because he has got um, a five days history of some bluish bumps and lumps appearing on his upper back and which has probably spread down to his lower back as well. Now uh, his mom says that he was born at 41 weeks of gestation. He was born through emergency section because he had fetal distress. His birth weight was around 3.5 kilogram and let's say his APCA scores were 7 and 9 and 1 and 5 minutes respectively. He had a little bit of mild respiratory distress at birth that resolved spontaneously within a few hours and he was discharged on day 3 uh, to home. Mom thinks that these bumps and lumps are causing him pain because he is crying a little bit more than like what they would consider normal for a baby of this age. Now, on uh, examination, uh, you find that he looks well. I mean, he's feeding well. His weight at the moment, because he's now 10 days of age, his weight is 3.6 kilograms. His temperature is 36.6 degrees Celsius. His heart rate is 147 and respiratory rate is 38. So, in uh, very uh, simple words, this is a baby who is alert and active with normal vital signs for his age. As I told you that his weight is 3.6 kg at the moment. Let's say his length is 52 cm which would probably be on the 50th centile. And when you examine him and look at the picture as well, he's got firm uh, indurated purple looking nodules and plaques which have got some ill-defined overlying erythema and that is present on his uh, what you call the upper back and uh, has gone to the lower back maybe you can see it on the lower back as well some of these lesions have got a bluish uh, or yellowish hue in the center uh, you don't think there is an evidence of infection or ulceration though one of the uh, lump looks to be a little bit of uh, uh, has got a little bit of fluctuation the rest of his physical examination is totally unremarkable so his chest abdomen uh, uh, throat ears everything else is fine and i told you that otherwise the baby looks very well in himself now if you look at this uh, picture so you can find that there are a few like sort of reddish purplish bumps and lumps appeared on his back so uh, at this point in time what could be the differentials think of the differentials that a baby who would be otherwise normal i mean normally you would think of okay well fine it could be multiple abscesses but if somebody had got multiple abscesses at this stage don't you think that that child would be very unwell or would be uh, displaying some uh, fever or even if he was uh, let's say not uh, having any fever he might be hypothermic or maybe irritable or maybe a bit of lethargic you know the generalized like uh, non-specific signs of an infection would be there which are not present in this particular case so uh, initially you think because you can't find any other explanation for that you thought that he might be having multiple abscesses though despite the fact that he looks very well but obviously because of the age and you're still scratching your head so you say okay well let's uh, be on the safe side so you pass an IV line you draw some bloods and you start him on IV fluclocycline which is the uh, antibody of choice for someone who's having like abscesses now he gets a few days of uh, antibiotics and the blood results they come back to be completely normal so his white blood cell count his crp uh, his lfts everything is uh, well i mean uh, his blood, blood let's say the the white blood cell count is normal the crp is normal and the blood culture itself comes out to be normal but what you find out is that his calcium is slightly on the higher side so he is showing mild hypercalcemia so his calcium is let's say 11 milligram per deciliter and slightly what you call borderline uh, derangement of the liver function test so let's say the aspartate transaminase is 60 units per liter and alanine transaminase is 50 units per liter so well fine i mean still you can't make anything out of that 
urinal urinalysis shows no proteinuria or hematuria and you also find out that his triglyceride levels are a bit on the higher side 300 milligram per deciliter so what you find out is that this baby who has got multiple like sort of uh, uh, bumps and lumps on his back and which you initially thought or as having like you know multiple abscesses being given a few days of IV antibiotics and in fact that hasn't made any difference because the lumps are still the same he still is very well the only one thing that you found abnormal on the blood test is a little bit raised in calcium a little bit raised in triglycerides and now you're scratching your head what could be this thing so what you do is because of his hyperglycemia as hypercalcemia and his uh, you know uh, deranged lipid profile let's say he was started on iv hydration he was given some calcitonin to bring down his uh, calcium levels and he was also given some steroid prednisolone uh, which probably started making him better so with this history stop for a moment and what do you think is the diagnosis in this case so a child who's got bumps and lumps on the back and uh, you know who was treated with uh, as suspected uh, multiple abscesses didn't respond to the antibiotics otherwise well raised calcium raised triglycerides maybe mildly derangement of the um, what you call this uh, um, triglycerides and as i told you he is uh, given iv hydration and he's administered calcitonin to lower his calcium level and he started on oral prednisolone uh, for some anti-inflammatory effects and uh, well i mean slowly and gradually the lesions start improving so what is the diagnosis so the diagnosis in this particular case is what we call a subcutaneous necrosis of fat in the neonates subcutaneous necrosis of fat in the unit so let me write here subcutaneous necrosis of fat in neonates this is a less known entity it's not very common but when it occurs uh, it takes you off guard because most of the time it is uh, misdiagnosed and people think that it's probably multiple abscesses or something else uh, but in fact, that is this condition which is known as subcutaneous necrosis of fat. So this was the diagnosis in this particular case. Now, what is uh, actually a uh, subcutaneous fat necrosis uh, of the unit? This is basically a lobar paniculitis. So this is a paniculitis. So this is a sort of an inflammation, not infection, I would call it an inflammation, idiopathic inflammation of the adipose tissue. So the adipose tissue gets inflamed and what happens is that there is crystallization. So the fat cell, the adipose cell, they become crystallized and because of crystallization, the fat cells, they die. And when they die, there is a sort of a localized necrosis which sometimes might lead to this uh, appearance of the bumps that uh, you feel like they are abscesses because you feel a little bit of fluctuation and that fluctuation is because of the central necrosis. And that necrosis, even if like, for example, if somebody gives an incision in these types of pump, you will see that the material which comes out is not pus. It's usually a chalky white material because it's like calcium crystals. So basically, it is the lobar paniculitis. Lobar paniculitis of what? Of the adipose tissue resulting in crystallization of the fat and subsequent necrosis of the adipose tissue. So basically the bumps that you are seeing in this particular case are nothing but these are deposits of um, uh, what you call crystallized calcium in the adipose tissue which has died. So that death and the surrounding inflammation is giving that bumpy or indurated appearance to these lesions. So, uh, some of the questions uh, associated with uh, subcutaneous uh, necrosis of fat uh, in neonates is number one. So, what are the risk factors? So, number one, let's say I told you that this is a less known entity, not very common. So, why would babies get this thing? Who is more prone to develop this subcutaneous necrosis of fat? So, some of the risk factors, they include perinatal stress. For example, in this particular case, this child had a perinatal stress. That's why he was delivered through emergency cesarean section so he had one of the risk factors 
probably had a little bit of hypoxia as well because he had some breathing difficulties which like uh, resolved within like two to three days so perinatal stress hypoxia similarly children who had hypothermia maybe like you know hypothermia because of sepsis or hypothermia sometimes there is therapeutic hypothermia for children babies who are born with the let's say hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy so hypothermia is also a risk factor birth trauma so if there is a traumatic birth like an obstructive birth and maybe you know the baby was born through forceps or suction they also have got more chances of developing uh, subcutaneous necrosis of fat uh, some of the maternal risk factors associated with this condition are maternal diabetes mellitus and maternal preeclampsia so if the mom has got like history of diabetes or she's got a history of high blood pressure kids are probably have got pro you know sort of comparatively more probability of developing uh, this condition and usually this happens in the first month of life meconian aspiration syndrome polycythemia and sepsis these are few of the other risk factors which might be associated so they're not like a sort of cause and effect relationship between these but there is some form of association like uh, the cases that uh, you know which had the subcutaneous necrosis of fat we have found that they have got these risk factors associated with them so these are a few of the risk factors. The other question is like, what are the characteristics of this subcutaneous fat necrosis lesion? Because it very much looks like um, what you call this um, uh, abscesses. So what is actually uh, happening in this particular condition? So the characteristics of these lesions is that number one, they are located in areas which are quite rich in brown fat. Like for example, you would find that they are more commonly found on the back shoulders and proximal limbs and usually their onset is within the first few weeks of life so it like you know it happens within like probably i would say between first and fourth week so it's usually a neonatal condition and these lumps are uh, quite firm like they are quite hard they're quite uh, firm like sort of inconsistency because of fat necrosis and a bit of calcification because of this you know um, calcium crystallization their color can be variable it ranges sometimes from skin colored uh, like pinkish dark pinkish it can be even purple or they can even have a bluish discoloration to them as well so sometimes they might be mistaken for bruises as well and you know that would like ring the bells for non-accidental injury because they are occurring on the back and usually these are not the places so remember like sometimes this could be quite treacherous now these lesions themselves they resolve within a few months to a few weeks to few months i would say without any scarring uh, and as i told you that uh, because of this uh, calcium uh, crystallization they are they can be associated with hypercalcemia now i would say 30 to 50 percent of the cases are associated with hypercalcemia the question is how do you confirm the diagnosis i mean in this particular case that we discussed we did blood cultures and things like that i mean the gold standard the gold standard of diagnosis is skin biopsy remember so if one answer that is skin biopsy skin biopsy is the gold standard but on unit nobody does these days you know sort of skin biopsy on unit so most of the time the diagnosis is clinical and some of the associated you know findings they help in the diagnosis for example if these type of condition and you find hypercalcemia and hypertriglyceridemia or uh, these sort of things so probably you would be thinking of subcutaneous uh, fat necrosis otherwise if a biopsy is done that biopsy would show a lobar or lobular paniculitis with needle shaped clefts uh, within the uh, what you call this uh, fat cells which are known as adipocytes which indicates that there is a fat necrosis so if you take a biopsy that would show fat necrosis of adipose tissue but remember most of the times the diagnosis is clinical rather than you know we relying on histopathological uh, diagnosis moving on to uh, the other question which is usually asked because this uh, condition is very much associated with hypercalcemia and that is what is what we are worried about because hypercalcemia itself can lead to uh, dehydration it can lead to uh, dangerous uh, arrhythmias as well so in this particular case the only thing that we would be worried about is hypercalcemia so that's why all children where we suspect subcutaneous fat necrosis we check the blood calcium levels if the blood calcium levels are raised then we bring the calcium down so there are various ways of bringing the calcium down you can bring the calcium down by pemetronate like you know which are bisphosphonate drugs 
al lead generate like there are so many and again some of them are licensed for they say some of them are not licensed if nothing else uh, calcitonin which is a hormone which uh, lowers the calcium level that can also be used like so uh, calcitonin can be used intravenously to bring the calcium levels down uh, within the uh, normal limit so so what other causes of hypercalcemia would uh, you consider if you uh, come across a case where you find like um, high calcium in a neonate so remember uh, subcutaneous fat necrosis is one thing apart from that you should also be considering williams syndrome williams syndrome is a condition in which there is hypercalcemia and usually there is a congenital heart condition which is known as uh, uh, supra aortic valvular stenosis and they might have some dysmorphic features as well uh, you should also be thinking about uh, idiopathic hypercalcemia which is hypercalcemia without any reason or hypocalciuric hypercalcemia in which the kidneys are not able to filter the uh, calcium properly so their uh, levels in the blood rises or sometimes using a formula which has got excess calcium in it so these are few of the differentials that you should keep in mind when you are thinking about uh, conditions in which the calcium is raised in a neonate so remember there are so many conditions but the normal ones are like williams syndromes like the common one side are not the normal one the common ones are williams syndrome that is associated with the supra valvular aortic stenosis and some dysmorphism hypo uh, calciuric uh, hypercalcemia idiopathic hypercalcemia and formula which contains excess calcium so consider this uh, in your differentials as well uh, as far as the, can, uh, the question how do you treat this condition you treat because there is hypercalcemia so uh, the treatment is for hypercalcemia so you give them IV fluids so they do not get dehydrated you will bring the calcium down either with bisphosphonate or with uh, steroids and to control the inflammation you can give them uh, steroids as well then the final question how long it takes uh, for the lesions to resolve so usually these lesions they take at take a while i mean normally in the um, in the acute phase we are more interested to bring the uh, calcium level down but the lesions themselves they can take anywhere between a few months to uh, few weeks to few months to resolve completely but when they resolve they resolve without any scarring they resolve without any um, sort of you know sequelae without any complication so this was all about like a subcutaneous necrosis of fat which is uh, not very common condition but when it present it does uh, it is very tricky to diagnose and uh, in this particular uh, uh, video I tried to discuss this condition with uh, the help of a clinical case and uh, you know uh, you know discussing this in a question answer format so you are well uh, prepared if in case uh, in your clinical practice you come across a case of subcutaneous uh, necrosis of fat in the neonates so i hope you have liked this video please give us a thumbs up and if you've got any questions put it down in the comment section below and i will get back to you uh, with the answers and stay tuned for more content here on this channel in the future take care bye bye